those three states, Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, had actually accused ECOWAS of working for the quote-unquote enemy uh, the way they saw mm. it and that it wasn't benefiting them. Indeed, uh, they, 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 they threatened, and I don't know if they actually have set up uh, another body. Now, uh, clearly ECOWAS doesn't need that, uh, such fragmentation uh, within the body. Uh, but how will ECOWAS, because it did say it was leaving some aspects of the sanctions very much on the table. I don't know. Maybe you'll be able to enlighten us on that, what those are. We call them targeted <laughs> sanctions. Yeah. Well, well, well when Omar Toure uh, announced on Saturday, he made it clear that ECOWAS, the community, was lifting economic, financial, and what he called institutional sanctions, definitely not political. Uh, and the political aspect will continue to be uh, in operation until further notice. That was his statement. However, if we look at ECOWAS itself, it is more of an economic community than a political community. If people are able to move freely across the community, they're able to trade with one another from one country to the other. 90% of the duties and functions of ECOWAS have been achieved. The political one is very shady, it's neither here nor there. We are talking about the political in terms of hostility, that when you organize election, you are not going to be invited as members and all these things. Not quite clear. So for me, ECOWAS has done the right thing, the most important thing, by lifting the economic and the social as well as institutional aspect of the sanctions. It is going to operate now as if there are no sanctions anymore. And Yuri, don't let us forget this. I alluded to this the last time we had a conversation on this, that the complications and contradictions would be too many for ECOWAS to bear if we are not where we are now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The sanctions will have had negative effects on the three countries in discourse, but much more on ECOWAS as a body. I mean, there are certain things that we cannot do in isolation of these three countries. For instance, what happened to the multinational security tax force, of which these countries were members? What happened to the Accra agreement that was you know, established in a bid to solve this security and economic problem? What happened to all of this? And they call okay, India, why they, no, man, no, no man is an island. No one is an island. I think Kekoas has realized that it is going to be very difficult, if not impossible, for her as a body to operate successfully without having this in operation. Um, I hope somewhere that uh, these three countries we are talking about constitute just about 10 percent of ECOWAS. But that's just demography. In terms of perspective representation, I mean, you cannot ignore Burkina Faso, Niger, and Mali in ECOWAS policies without ECOWAS itself, you know, uh, feeling it very, very hard. So the decision is welcome, it is expected, it is not unexpected, and it is the ideal thing for any sub organization to do in this period of history in Africa. And of course, that is for the sake of Yeah, but, but, but where, does, where, where does this leave um, uh, the uh, admirable de uh, declaration of ECHO as that uh, as a body, it had a zero tolerance for illegal uh, government regime changes, uh, you know, government changes, and uh, there was absolutely no question about that. Let it be clear. Remember, in the very early days, um, even though now that this has happened, uh, we also read that um, a grouping of the Senate of senators from across the 19 states of the country have actually hailed ECOWAS and indeed our president, who, who as you know, is pivotal in the affairs of ECOWAS. Um, but where does that leave 
those kind of um, ideal, uh, idealistic uh, proposals about no mm -hmm. anti-democratic changes of government will not be tolerated. Mm -hmm. uh, does 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 it, um, is it sort of like eating its having to eat its words a bit? No, no, Yuri. I don't think Ecowas is eating its words. Uh, the pronouncement, political. ECOWAS will not tolerate illegal government or any form of unconstitutional government. It's expected of any responsible organization, a sub-regional one at that. So making that statement was quite another and is still quite another. Now that sanctions are being lifted, I think ECOWAS is now rethinking the concept of democracy. Democracy is often defined as the government of the people, for the people, and the people. The people there does not necessarily get reduced to periodic election as a means of having government. It has to do with the feelings of these people. It has to do with the sentiments of these people. It has to do with the yearnings and aspirations of these people. It also has to do with the way people, the people we are talking about, perceive issues and interpret issues. These are the issues that bother on democracy. So if a people understand this issue this way, even when it is wrong on the pages of textbook, the understandings, the interpretations of the people will dictate and determine what happens. And that is why when you see, uh, the, when you look at the statement of the president of ECOWAS, three reasons were given for the lifting of the sanction. One is the approaching Ramadan, which is a religious issue that holds every sentiment in the minds of the people of this country. And of course, the approaching of um, um, Lent. And the third one is the intervention of prominent actors in sub-regional politics, such as Alaji uh, Yakubu Gowan, you know, as it were. I'm sure Obasanjo too will have been considered in terms of his opinion when these decisions were taken. Yuri, these three factors are merely sentimental. They are not political. They are not legal. They are not even constitutional. And they are taken as the serious matters over which ECOWAS took its decision. So this tells you that ECOWAS is now thinking and rethinking democracy as values that people hold in esteem. And so if in Niger there is a coup, and the majority of the people in Niger say that this is what we want, that is democracy, even yeah. when elections don't hold. And exactly, that is what you're supposed to be thinking about it. Here. So what ECOWAS is explaining, in my view, is the sudden realization that an institution like this, an institution like that, cannot reduce democracy or governance to just periodic election or military versus not military operation. Mm -hmm. The learnings of the people, the sentiments of the people, the aspirations of the people, the understanding and interpretations of the people must come first. Okay. And this, for me, is a welcome development. And it is part of what I've always been advocating, that ECOWAS must listen to the people who constitute the member states. You cannot just operate on that legal framework of if you are not democratic, therefore, you go to hell and you're born to ashes. The complications are going to be much more on ECOWAS and, of course, the world than what we have seen now. Okay. Um, Akade, I do believe you made a, a slip there somewhere. Um, Yakubu Gowan is a, a known Christian. Well, oh, you did say allergy, Yakubu Gowan. I, 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 I realize that. I, I take that back. Yakubu <laughs> Gowan is not an allergy, perhaps a pastor. Um, I take that back. Apologies <laughs> to the <public>. Indeed. <laughs>